markers like at least half a dozen times. So I think they expose you guys a little bit to the extent of spirometry in your training. So I will preface by saying that I don't care if you don't know anything about it because I don't, I don't know what your training was in school. So I'll ask questions to you and if you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. That's, I'm okay with that. Um, you guys good with that? Yep. Okay. So first and foremost, what's it do? <laughs> it expands it the lungs. It expands your lungs. lungs. No, it doesn't no. do that. No, no it but it increases the lungs. How does it do it that? It increases the tidal volume of the lungs. How does it do that? By you inhaling, inhaling. the air. Oh, so you're doing that. Well, I do that every day when I'm sitting on my desk. So no. <laughs> on its own, it's plastic. It doesn't do anything. Uh, any more than the barbell sitting on the floor of a gym. It doesn't yeah. do anything. Unless you use you lift it. it up. So this is an exercise tool. And in some ways it's also treatment depending on the condition that you have. And so because it's exercise, there is a way to do the exercise correctly and incorrectly, just like that barbell I was just talking about. If I grab a barbell and I just rip it off the ground and I start doing this with it, am I gonna get strong? No, I'm probably gonna hurt myself. I'm just throwing this barbell around. Uh, same with this guy here. Now, not everyone can do this exercise the same because we're all a little different. And so Wes is a larger person than, uh, than Shane. And so his targets will be different, right? And so inside the incentive spirometer is a document that tells you what someone's target might be. And so men and women are, are, have different goals because our thoraxes are different sizes and our lung capacities are smaller. And so what you'll see here by looking at someone's height um, and their weight on this one side, you'll be able to find um, what an appropriate target would be. Now that is an inspiratory capacity. Does anybody know what that means? Inspiratory? Inspiratory capacity. The mm -hmm. amount of air that's air going that's, into the lungs? No, the capacity of your lung, right? Yeah, so inspiratory yeah. capacity is basically all the volume that you can move oh, in and out of your lungs yeah. at the okay. end of expiration to the peak of inspiration. Oh, okay. So, I will demonstrate so you know what inspiratory capacity looks like. So I exhale everything I have. <laughs> and inhale. <gasps> Until I can inhale no more. And that volume is called inspiratory capacity. Okay. We all part. differ by our size. Of and course. Sex and, yeah. yeah, because um, a very small framed woman has very small lungs compared to a very large framed man. Uh, and so you can find out what that number is going to be by this little chart here. And so if I just walk up to Ernesto and I say, all right, here's your target, and your target's going to be 3,000, and I do that for the woman next door, that's been unfair. All right, so you gotta got to know what the target is going to be. All right, so how do you do it? It's got a mouthpiece. Right? So do, do you blow into it? Do you inhale from it? What do you guys think? Yeah, you put a seal on it with your mouth and you... You inhale. Inhale. You inhale. Inhale. inhale it and you make that. Uh, like a, that's right. I, don't, I don't know what you call that blue thing inside, but you have to make it's it lift that piston. piston. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a bomb. Or yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> like a bomb. <laughs> a, bo a bomb. I was going to ask. It's like a bomb. You put the water. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the release valve? <laughs> this, is a, this is a pneumatic bomb. No water required. No. <laughs> We're talking about this today. <laughs> So if you guys don't want breathe, to, please. Uh, don't share a mouthpiece. That's gross. But if one of you guys want to want to demonstrate, so you can see what it's like or feel what it's like, you take a breath from it. When you do, a couple things will happen. This piston will rise. Yeah. And the little indicator on the on the right will rise as well. Now I'm gonna pause here. Yeah. And say, when, have you have you guys seen someone do this, or do you just dump it and say good luck? Okay. Can we give one to Wes and see how he does? Okay, let's <laughs> okay. 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 I'm not giving you instructions. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to see how you do it. Okay. Well, he's done it before because he. Well, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I didn't give you instructions though. Give me instructions. So yeah. Yeah. For, don't don't we first have to Ooh, see what see. his? Don't see what his. I'm sorry. I just want to see how he performs it. Okay, let's see. Can I lift it? Do whatever you want. See what his. It doesn't work upside down. No, if you do it like this, this is oh, going to oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, wow. Oh. Okay, do one more. Are we looking at 
26 or? Okay, did he do it correctly or incorrectly? Incorrectly. Okay, what, what would you change? You have to, you know, like, you have to empty out your, out you have to you empty have to start out at the end of expiration. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to also empty out your start. Whole, you got to dump everything. Yeah. Okay. And then take your breath. Okay. But overall, because yeah. you'll that go was, higher if you That was actually a, a fair, a fair effort, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, what I don't are, know if, how tall are you? <laughs> I want to know. Well, I don't know if Wes was focused on it or not, but the reason I say he did it correctly is because I told you two things happen. The piston will rise when he takes a breath, hits the bomb, and the little indicator will rise. Very important that people not focus on the piston. They focus on the little indicator. This is a flow indicator. So if someone does it way too fast, and I'll do it. Oh, so you can see, here's the indicator here. <laughs> I can put it all the way to the top. Not hard to do. Very, very easy. But the, the little indicator shot to the top. You wanted to just... So I'm going to fall, and I'm going to try again. This is the equivalent of grabbing that barbell and going... Yeah, yeah you might be able to do it. And you can't move your arm the next day. That's a different <laughs> exercise than like... Because it's torn. You ever do this? You ever grab a, a barbell on nice Take stuff? it slow, yeah. You know you need a lot of weight, right? Mm, like, yeah, more effective. So same here. So okay. doing it slow is kind of hard. Um, Okay, I didn't get nearly as high. It's on okay. That one, right? It's working. And so people will focus on this piston and go, oh, just get it to just get it to twenty five hundred. Just get it to three thousand. And that's not entirely it. That's like just saying, get the barbell to three hundred pounds. Okay, you gotta do the exercise correctly. Alright, so very important to start at the end of expiration, like full deep breath. <coughs> How many times should they do it? Three? At a minimum? Yeah. Ten times? Three, five, I hear a ten. Ten, ten uh, times in every, ten. every hour? Ten no, times every hour? Frequency, I love it. All right, how many times per hour do you think? Oh, that's right, ten times per hour. The right there. Lemonade. Good for you. ER. Okay. ER, okay. So, they yeah, doing ten breaths per hour, how many hours a day? <clears throat> um, every day. Um, every, every yeah. While awake. You're on it, can while, you give it to me? Well, of course you can't do it this it's while awake. You gotta be awake while to awake. do this. Yeah. <laughs> every hour, ten breaths every hour while awake. While awake. So, mm -hmm. how long will it take them to complete the exercise then? 15 minutes? Technically, less than two minutes. If less than a minute. Less yeah, than right? a minute. If, huh? if respiratory rate is 12 to 20 breaths per minute, yeah, well, 10 breaths every that. hour will take you less than a minute. So, even if you want to watch your patient do it, you're there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Give me instruction, hand it to them, like, all right, let's go. And they do it. They don't got to do it fast. They don't got to keep going. Right. Pause between your breaths. Yeah. Ten breaths every hour. And what you're wanting, wanting them to do is document how they do. So this is a chart for seven days to set the target for them. And then they take the breaths and take that maximum breath over ten breaths. And you give yourself a little check here. Put an initial there or something like that. And then you've got seven days worth. Mm -hmm. Can you do it for 14 days or a month or the rest of your life? Sure, that's going to hurt. Me. So what's the point? Prevent uh, complications like what? development what? of uh, respiratory conditions uh, like pneumonia. Well, atelectasis, yes. Atelectasis, collapse of the. Um, <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly right, yes. Yeah. So atelectasis is a concern. Uh -huh. Is that the one you just saw that you did? So I got a patient in station one right now whose chest x ray is showing atelectasis. Mm -hmm. I ordered this as his treatment. Yeah. So the nurse will go by and give some education on this. But what we're trying to do is recruit those alveoli, kind of get those deep alveoli. breaths. And this will show us, like, how deep are you breathing? And it's going to pop yeah, them open again. Open them up, yeah. Um, also helps exercise the respiratory muscles, right? Our intercostal muscles, our diaphragm. Mm. And that's important for patients who have COPD, right? Asthma, something like that. Mm. These people are having exacerbations in their life. Exercising those respiratory muscles helps them ride out their exacerbations. All right, if we can increase the strength of these muscles when they're kind of going through it, they're going to go through it. At least their muscles will be there for them. And this is how we do it. You guys are doing it too, but you're doing it through cardiovascular exercise. You go for your walks, your runs. You know, you know, Sam probably doesn't have that electrolysis because he's buzzing around the building, all <laughs> right? Because he's increasing his, his lung capacity. He's taking deep breaths. Um, if you don't do that, and then you have like an operation of sorts. Why is it right on that Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, yeah, if you have an operation and you kind of hypoventilated because of your operation, you're in metalectasis afterwards. So this helps keep patients here and out of the hospital and write out their COPD exacerbation. Um, questions about that? I have a question. Somebody who has like a CO2, like elevated CO2 level, is this something? I know you're going to ask me a question. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no, no, I know it. This better be as hard. I'm trying to answer my own question right <laughs> now. <laughs> Think first mind. before you ask. What are you hoping to achieve with your CO2? CO2. CO2. No, because sometimes we have those, you know, we get those lab results that has like elevated CO2 levels. And like, obviously, like you, you don't want to introduce too much oxygen on them because they're on oxygen and they have COPD. So you're talking right. about you get a BMP back and it says CO2? Okay. The blood level, the blood CO2. All right, yeah. let's make it a point. Blood gases you're talking about? So, I love her nest. I mean, so smart. So, I'm not, I'm just... You say all the right <laughs> things, though. Just, like I really don't know all the things. He's like a bird. <laughs> when you get a BMP and it says CO2, that is not CO2. Mm -hmm. So he said blood gas, and that is CO2. Mm -hmm. But they don't say CO2. A little biochemistry for you, but it's not complicated. What CO2 is on your BMP is actually bicarbonate. It's a metabolic product. Mm -hmm. And so it should be between 22 and 26. Mm -hmm. If I get a blood gas and I have bicarbonate on that, that is the same number. Mm -hmm. Normal CO2 levels are between 35 and 45. And so you're looking at this going, why is this abnormal? Why is this 24? Is, is this guy hyperventilating? It's not. It's technically bicarbonate. It's because in that carbonic acid equation, increase in CO2 shuttles across this. You guys remember this from chemistry, right? Mm -hmm. To balance out the formula, it shuttles across a base bicarbonate and not opposite. Um, that's bicarbonate, and so you might notice that those are abnormal in your CO2 retainers, your COPD patients. And so those people are equilibrium. That bicarbonate makes the pH normal. You don't want to change their pulmonary their CO2 with this. Otherwise, you'll dump their CO2 and then they'll be in metabolic uh, alkalosis. And then we did it to them. So don't hyperventilate with it. Yeah. 10 normal breaths, but start at the end of expiration. Inhale until you can inhale no more. Mm -hmm. Make note of the, the, the piston. The piston has a top and a bottom. It's the top that we measure. So, <laughs> so that puts me at like a thousand right there. It's mm -hmm. the top. That makes sense because the bottom is actually isn't zero. When you're breathing through it, it actually comes up the top. Um, questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Someone walk me through it. I'm gonna pick on Jesus because I like him. Good. Jesus, tell me how to do it. Um, yeah. So first you want the patient to uh, fully exhale, uh, and then you have okay. to do yeah. So they can't blow out anymore. Okay. And then, then that's when they start. And yeah. you get, it's not moving. So you want to make sure your lips are fully. Oh, I gotta put it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. <laughs> it helps. It helps. It helps. It helps. And then when you start to Taxi. inhale, you want you don't want to over inhale. You want to keep that ball in, in between the middle and do a nice uh, normal breath until you can't inhale anymore. Once you stop, you get that number, you write it down, yeah. and uh, you make sure that it's a target, uh, target number based on their height. Okay. So it's on, you have 2750 on this little chart. Yeah. With this, they can keep track, right? 10 times so an hour. 10, while 10 times an hour. While Every away. hour. So for, for these are, can it be used on the head patient? Mm -hmm. This is female. Yeah. yeah. So the short answer is yes. This isn't going to hurt anybody. Yeah. So for him, the hazards are hyper hyperventilation. Oh, mm -hmm. how tall are you, Mike? Sorry. Five she said it properly. I'm just trying to see what I'm Because it's in centimeters or inches. Sorry. Okay. So then I'm ten. 70 inches. Yeah. Okay. okay. So he's here. And my age is 21. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, man. Stop <laughs> lying, bro. <laughs> Stop lying, bro. He's like maybe 40. 35. 32. So it should be 3250? Uh -huh. Yep. 3250? You can blow in this, by the way. You don't have to, like, and then put your mouth on it. You can blow into it. Oh, you can get out of the way. 
Your goal is 2250? No, 3250. 3250? Oh, yeah. 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 No. 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 Is it a problem if I came under? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a problem. So your COPD patients, they're going to be a little bit low. low. They're already kind of hyperventilating mm-hmm. or hyper expanded. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be a little bit low, and that's normal for them. Um, but what they, those people will notice is that they keep doing this over time, and that volume, that inspiratory capacity will go up. Will go up, yeah. And then because they're doing the exercise 10 breaths every hour, these muscles will become stronger. And you know, that's on any patient. Yeah. You may not notice it because you're young, fit, and healthy, and you exercise. But these folks aren't like that. So, yeah, any, any patient can do this. Your post-op patients can do this. Known respiratory, known cardiac problems, um, they will benefit from this. Um, people our age, um, if, you're, if you have a sedentary lifestyle and you want to, like, Maybe increase your inspiratory capacity because you're going to exercise or something that will help you. So this is an exercise device. It strengthens your diaphragm, strengthens your intercostal muscles. Um, so if I, we have a patient that while laying flat and having a shortness of breath, you, we should suggest to have that type of activity, right? No, there's like 15 steps before that. So if you have a patient who's shortness of breath while lying flat, I'd want to know why they're short of breath while lying flat. Flat, that sounds like heart failure. Sit that patient up. That's probably pulmonary edema causing that. Um, or they're extremely obese and the weight of their chest is pressing, on pressing them. down on them because of their gravity. And so if you sit those patients up, it's easier for them to breathe. Um, this device right here, I don't know that it would strengthen your muscles enough to overcome the weight of an obese chest. Right. Here. But it won't hurt to use. It also so it won't be that effective ability. if you're doing it while lying flat on your back. Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, it's ideal to be sitting up. Yeah, you want to be sitting up for it. Come on in. No, I meant when they have a problem uh-huh. having respiratory issue when they're laying flat. Mm-hmm. So, oh, are you, are you, even though even though they sit up, they have issue already with with. Oh, so you're proposing that maybe yeah. like while they're sleeping at night, it's hard for them to breathe. And if they would have done this, it would be easier for them get to get an breathe. order for that for their exercise, correct? I could see. Guidelines as well. I could see why that would right, help yeah. if, if they can do that over time. Yeah. Um, especially if they're like overweight. You're welcome. If they're overweight and they have upper airway obstruction, and you're trying to breathe against that obstruction, it's not going to fix your sleep apnea, but it will help you take deeper breaths while you sleep Um, because we already breathe shallow when we sleep and we breathe less when we sleep and so people who are breathing already shallow in the daytime those muscles will help us take a deeper breath Uh, another peculiar phenomenon of human behavior is a thing called sigh you know what sigh is sigh uh, Every now and then throughout your day, you go. Uh, like when you're frustrated. <laughs> yeah. When I see, when when I I see, see Harrison. Oh, when I see Ernesto just sitting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we do it because we're exasperated. I was the one that brought up the glug glasses. Yeah. Yeah. This is an automatic thing. It's unconscious. You do it because your body's just trying to catch up. Oh, so okay. your sigh will be better because. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a fuller sigh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing wrong. Patients who are immobile in a bed for a long amount of time, basically everybody in here, are going to have some measure of atelectasis. Because they're just kind of like stuck in bed. They get yeah. an hour of therapy a day at that, so um, that will help them prevent atelectasis from developing. And you want better results in your therapy, you got to get them breathing a little bit better. So I, I can't think of any patient who wouldn't benefit from this unless they're already an athlete or something. Um, but big one here preventing atelectasis. Yeah. You guys go with it? Any questions about it? Um, this is their mouthpiece. They get to, don't use it. It's not for you. So yeah. you can store it with that if you want. Um, and they get to take it home with them because it's gross to or throw it away, but we don't really use them. That's what I got. So, guys, we'll see, start seeing here in the coming weeks. We're going to keep in servicing, but in the coming weeks, we're going to be putting these in orders. Obviously, like Adi said, 
you notice a patient doesn't have an order and you think it's gonna help, then obviously let's do that, right? And RJ's ordering. We have some already, but we need to order a lot more to, to get in throughout the entire facility. But let's, let's start. If, if you have a question and you're too ashamed to ask it today or something you remember later on that you forgot to ask, stop me. Let's talk about it. I nerd out kind of hard on this stuff. So. We'll do okay. that. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Do you want us to write it in the order? Because I could.